Let's go. Hello, hello to everyone. My name is Irene Adiba. I am from Albania. I'm master teacher and trainer here in Albania. I have 25 years in education. So happy to be here today with you. I take the privilege to be a trainer for the training session by the Training Learning Development Department of the International Internship University. International Internship University, IIU, is a leading virtual education system and global brand confederation which is the most valuable, trusted worldwide and well-reputed in delivering innovative programs globally. It is a trusted name for quality training programs and is committed to provide better and visual education to all the young learners of the globe. In a short span of time, IIU has spread its wings in 195 countries and six continents under the strong leadership of its visionary founder, Mr. Piyush Pandit Sir, a committed and inspiring social activist, a passionate educationist from the last two decades, providing education to students from various social and cultural backgrounds. So happy for, for this. Now, today with you, I am presenting my uh, topic, uh, active learning. I want to share my screen now to represent to you. Yes. If you can see now, I can make it full screen. Flexible learning. It is visible for you? Yes. Thank you. The school education is in a critical transition phase where the increasingly technology rich learning environments and students centering pedagogy are gaining ground in current and practices. Schools and teachers are also directly impacted by developments about modernizing or transforming physical learning environments. Can I go to next slide, please? Okay. A way to address these challenges is active learning pedagogies that help prepare the next generation of learners for the problems that they will face in ever-changing world. No? Active learning and innovative teaching in flexible learning spaces is a session that will introduce you to the theoretical background and principles of active learning you will become familiar with flexible, innovative learning environments and recognize their importance, identify the challenges of current classrooms and think about ways on how to redesign the space and make it more dynamic. In this session, we will also explore learning beyond the traditional classroom, setting and create scenarios based on the principles of active learning using the online scenario tool. The session content has been designed to stimulate reflection and discussion with you so that you can learn from each other's experiences and ideas. Okay. What active learning is? How uh, can we implement it 
the key competencies and transversal skills. What flexible learning space are benefits in the learning procedure? As I said at the beginning in this module, we learn uh, what active learning is and discuss how can we implement it in the classroom. Therefore, the main learning objectives of part one are to become familiar with active learning and the opportunities it offers, to explore the key competencies and transversal skills, to learn about some practical techniques of active learning, but also reflect on more, and to learn what flexible learning spaces are and the benefits they, they offer. Before we dive into the actual content of this uh, session, what are the first thoughts that come to mind uh, when active learning is mentioned by you? You can add, if you want, some words that first come to mind in this uh, moment. Definition of active learning. Uh, after warming up by reflecting a bit on the active learning pedagogy, we are ready to get it started and explore what is the concept is all about. In theory, there are several definitions that explain active uh, learning. The roots of active learning can be traced back to Confucius, who stated, I heard and I forget. I see and I remember, I do, and I understand. It is also commonly thought that, that people remember 10% of what they read, 20% of what they hear, 30% of what they see, 50% of what they hear and see, 70% of what they say, 90% of what they do. In other words, learners need to share their learning experiences make links with their background knowledge and new information and apply it to their daily lives. Another uh, definition suggests that active learning is a process of create meaning. New knowledge is built when students combine new information with their existing concepts, knowledge or experience through the reflection process. Any new information that is not consistent with the past experiences is rejected as incorrect. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any new information yeah, or incorporated into the new knowledge. To create meaning in active learning, students have to produce active effort. You know, in other words, active learning requires students to do something, read, discuss, write, uh, that needs higher order thinking skills always. Benjamin Bloom defines higher order thinking skills as the cognitive processes that require thinking at a more complex, higher level as it indicated in the image uh, here below. Remember, recall facts and basic concepts. Understand, explain ideas or concepts apply, use information in new situations, analyze, draw connections among ideas, evaluate, justify a stand or decision, and create, produce new or original work, the higher level of Bloom's taxonomy. Additionally, according to literature, active learning within an active pedagogy framework must be student-centric. Gilio explains that students learn through real-world problems in an individual or interpersonal way that allows them to process information actively and deeply. The five key characteristics of student-centered approach are identified. By one, the balance of power. For the student-centered approach to work, power needs to be redistributed from teachers to the students, no? As students should be in the center of the learning process, they need to start being in charge of the learning process, having the ability to influence what and how they are learning. The function of the content. 
following the constructivist approach where learners actively construct their knowledge by constructing the meaning and relating it to the previously acquired knowledge. The role of the teacher. What is the role of the teacher? Involving students in the process of acquiring knowledge and being active in the learning. Teachers are not the only source of expertise and students should not wait for them in order to, to learn. The responsibility for learning. Students should be responsible for their own learning. They should be taught how to learn and become autonomous, self-regulating learners. Five, evaluation, purpose, and processes. Teachers need to implement assessment for learning and assessment as learning, both being formative assessment strategies to support students as learners. The pedagogy of active learning is not new. Research supports that these elements are influenced by some pre-existing theories. According to University of Cambridge Local Examination Syndicate, active learning had its roots on constructivism, social constructivism, schemas or schemata scaffolding Bloom's taxonomy, child-centric approach, inquiry-based, problem-based, or discovery learning and experiential learning. In more detail, constructivism is based on the cognitive theories of Piaget and learners construct their own understanding individually. According to Lavigozzi, learning happens primarily through social interaction in social constructivism. Jerome Brunner describes scaffolding as supporting a students or a group of students in their learning of new language or skills. The revised Bloom's taxonomy offers a classification of active, affective, and cognitive skills. Active learning approaches will help students develop at every stage of Bloom's taxonomy. Maria Montessori advocates a child-centered approach. Students play an active role in their learning while teachers are activators of learning in student-centered or learner-centered learner. Inquiry-based, problem-based or discovery learning where learners learn by addressing and posing questions analyzing evidence, connecting such evidence to pre-existing knowledge, drawing conclusion and reflecting upon their findings. Expansion learning describes someone learning from direct experience. What are the key competencies? As we have seen in the previous unit, there are different definitions for active learning from different authors. In this unit, we will ex examine why active learning is important. Active learning is important as it directly supports the development of key competencies and transversal skills. Are you familiar with these two terms and concepts? Let's have a closer look at them. The key competencies determined by the European Commission are those which all individuals need for personal fulfillment and development, employability, social inclusion, and active citizenship. They are developed in a lifelong learning perspective from early childhood throughout adult life and through formal, non-formal, and informal learning. They can summarize as the following. Literacy competence. Literacy is the ability to identify, understand, express, create, and interpret concepts, feelings, facts, and opinions in both oral and written forms, using visual, sound, audio, and digital materials across disciplines on and context. It implies the ability to communicate and connect effectively with others in an appropriate and creative way. Multilingual competence. This competence defines the ability 
to use different languages. Speaking, writing, reading, listening appropriately and effectively for communication. Mathematical competence and basic competencies in science and technology. It is the ability to develop and apply mathematical thinking and insights in order to solve a range of problems in everyday situations. Mathematical competence involves to different degrees the ability and willingness to use mathematical modes of thought and presentations, formulas, models, graphs, charts, etc. Competence in science refers to the ability of willingness to explain the natural world by making use of the knowledge and methodology employed, including observation and experimentation, in order to identify questions and to draw evidence-based conclusion. Digital uh, competence. Applying technology effectively is a tool to research, organize, evaluate, and communicate information. Using digital technologies, communication, networking tools, and social media appropriately to access, manage, integrate, evaluate, and create information to function successfully in a given environment. Personal, social, and learning to learn. It's another key competence. It is the ability to reflect upon oneself effectively manage time and information, work with others in a constructive way and manage one's one learning and career. It includes the ability to cope with uncertainty and complexity, learn to learn, support one's physical and emotional well-being to maintain physical and mental health, and to be able to lead a health conscious, future-oriented life. Another important key competence is uh, citizenship competence. It is the ability to act as responsible citizens and to fully participate in civic and social life based on understanding of social, economic, legal, and political concepts and structures, as well as global developments and sustainability. Another key competence is cultural awareness and expression competence. Working effectively in multinational team, respecting and being aware of cultural differences and working effectively with people from a range of social and cultural backgrounds. Entrepreneurship competence. It refers to the capacity to act upon opportunities and ideas and to transform them into values for others. It is founded upon creativity, critical thinking, and problem solving, taking initiative and perseverance, and the ability to work collaboratively in order to plan and manage projects that are of cultural, social, or financial value. Transversal skill. As regards to the transversal skills, the UNESCO framework for transversal skills defines them as skills that are typically considered as not specifically related to a particular job or task, academic discipline or area of knowledge, and that can be used in a wide variety of situation and work setting for example, uh, organization skills. According to this framework, Transversal skills are competencies that are transferable between jobs and can be summarized as follows. Critical and innovative thinking. This includes creativity, entrepreneurship, resourcefulness, application skills, reflective thinking and reasoned decision making. Interpersonal skills, they include communication skills, organization skills, teamwork, collaboration, sociability, collegiality, empathy, and compassion. Intrapersonal skills, they include self-discipline, ability to learn independently, flexibility and adaptability, self awareness perseverance, self-motivation, compassion, 
integrity, risk taking, and self respect. Global citizenship. It includes awarenesses, tolerance, openness, responsibility, respect for diversity, ethical understanding, intercultural understanding, ability to resolve conflicts, democratic participation, respect for the environment, national identity, and sense of uh, belonging. What about media and information literacy? It includes the ability to locate and access information through ICT media libraries and archives, to express and communicate ideas through ICT. Okay. Practical techniques of active learning now. So far, we have gained an idea of what active learning is, as well as the skills and competencies that this pedagogy supports. Are you curious to see some practical techniques and activities of how we can implement it in our classrooms? I guess, yes. Techniques or activities help active learners create meaning and learn actively. Some of the most common techniques are think, pair, share. If the teacher asks students a question that requires higher order thinking skills, for example, levels of application, analysis, or evaluation within Bloom's taxonomy. As the picture below indicates, the teacher asks students to think or write about an answer, then discuss their answers with the partner or in bigger groups, and they try to come to a consensus. Then the teacher asks the students to share their answers and follow up with his or her explanations of the solution. You know? Concept maps. They are visual representations of the relationships between concepts, as you can see at the image here. Concepts are placed in nodes often circles, and the relationships between them are indicated by labeled arrows that concepts connect the concepts. The teacher has students create a concept map, identifying the key concept for mapping in a small groups or as a complete place. The teacher asks students to determine the general relationship between uh, the concept and Organize them two by two, drawing arrows between the related concepts and labeling with a short phrase to describe the relationship. So far, we believe uh, that you have gained an overview of what key competencies and transversal skills are. How can you, as an educator, cultivate students' competencies and skills. Team-based learning, TBL. This is a structured form of small group learning that emphasizes students' preparation outside of the class and application of knowledge in the class. Students are strategically organized into various teams of five to seven students working together. More information on how this strategy works can be found in internet. Problem-based learning, PBL. The teacher asks students to address complex and challenging problems and work collaboratively to solve them. PBL is about connecting disciplinary knowledge with the real problem, uh, with the real world problems. A student actively guides his or her own learning individually or in a group. The selected problem should affect or reflect real life circumstances and be contemporary to facilitate the process of learning and doing. Some ideas from problem based uh, learning opportunities. If no project ideas immediately occur to you and your students, try collaborating with other educators in your school building or community to share insights. Here are a few questions that can help jumpstart brainstorming. 
how can we limit food waste, uh, food waste in the school cafeteria, for example? How could we improve access to healthy food in our community? Or how could we track and protect local plant or animal species? How could we improve school attendance? How might we limit cold on and flu transmission among students? Is there a better way to manage school traffic during pickup and drop-off times? A very interesting example of problem-based learning can be found here in this uh, project. We, uh, in our school, we have made a lot of projects. The last one, uh, students were involved in researching topics uh, of personal interest. They used many source of information, including their own experiences. Students were excited to uncover unexpected connections between toys and history, the world of television, businesses, psychology, and other fields of adult endeavors. In addition, students in discussions with the teacher became more aware of how different people use language for different purposes. Class discussion is also among the common activities that promote active learning. Gonzalez uh, presents the seven class discussion, the strategies which aim to engage all students in the lesson. She divides the strategies into three groups. High prep, which require more teacher preparation. Low prep, which can be used at any time without special preparation ongoing strategies, which can be integrated into the instruction. The next unit provides some examples for each category while going through the different strategies. You are highly encouraged to reflect and come up with your own idea, ideas. High prep strategies. Some of the high prep strategies are gallery walk. Firstly, students work in small groups on a certain topic assigned by a teacher. Then they are divided into new groups and rotate between the sessions, teaching one another about the content they were working on. Physical uh, chairs. This is a form of debate. The debatable statement is uh, read aloud and students divide into positions based on whether they agree or disagree with the statement. Uh, you can see the image also. It may also take the form of continuum. Standing in a half cycle, students take turns to define their, their positions. Socratic uh, seminar, the last one. For this discussion activity, students need to be prepared beforehand, beforehand by reading a text, or a couple of texts related to the topic and annotating them. The discussion starts with a leader who asks an open-ended question like, uh, what do you think this, uh, this text means? The discussion follows naturally with the aim of gaining a deeper understanding of the text presenting. Socratic seminars can take the form of a fishbowl activity where only a couple of students discuss the topic and the others act as observers. Okay. I have finished for today. Thank you very much for your attention. It was a great pleasure being here with you. Dear participant, really great being part as a trainer in IIU in this session.